Hey guys, we're beginning to another episode of When the Scriptures Become Real. It's kind of a podcast where we learn, where we study, where we grow, where we try to become the best friends of ourselves as we can, as we continue to serve our Lord. Can you guys find the podcast on YouTube? And you can find the podcast anywhere you can get your podcast. We're just so thankful you guys are here, you found us, and that you guys are with us today. Okay, so as we get started here, I, I'm sorry I couldn't record on Monday. I know I said it was going to be released Monday, but I had some meetings on Monday and it got really late. So I, I didn't want to rush this. So I wanted to give this its its proper time and its proper way to breathe as we study and as we meditate on this. So I'm excited to do this today. I really wanted to do it yesterday, but I'm really excited that we can study and that we can go through uh, Rahab today. So we're going through this Rahab series. If you haven't listened to part one, Part one's called The Poetry, and that was a lot of background on Rahab and who she was, on Israel's history. So go back and listen to that because that forms the story of going and diving deeper into Rahab's heart. So you got to understand the beginning to understand where we're going right now. So go back and check that out and come back and listen to this one as we keep going and as we move forward. So if you guys are getting your Bibles out, you're in a group study, you're driving, you're at the gym, we're, we're getting ready to go back in time and look and be with Rahab for a little bit and see what we can do to understand her heart just a little bit more. So as you guys are getting prepped, as we're gonna getting prepped to go, here's, here's where we want to start with this today as we start our conversation. Uh, there is going to be two very important days in your guys' lives. Okay, there's going to be two very important days. Here's the first day. The day that you that you know that you're needed. The day you know that you're needed. There's nothing like feeling needed. And, and right now you might be in a place where, well, oh, I'm good without people. I'm good without this. You may feel that, but at some point something happened to get you to the place where you're at. So everybody who's lived and that has ever lived and ever will live, they want to have a feeling of feeling needed. And when you feel like that, there's a there's a level of your value feels like it goes up, not only in your eyes, but in others' eyes. Then the way that you that you see yourself, the way that you talk about yourself, the way that you help others is on a whole different level because now you feel like you are needed somewhere. You're needed by someone. You're you're needed, right? So that's going to be a very important day in your life when you know that you're needed. Here's a second day that's going to be important. When you're no longer needed. When you're no longer needed. So that high, right, that high that you felt of feeling valuable, of feeling seen, of feeling needed, of having that, that self-feeling that feels great, that, that high that you're on, at some point that high is going to go down. And then you're not going to be as needed as you thought you were. And that day, guys, as, as uh, hard as that day is going to be, it's necessary because those days keep you humble. Those days keep you looking at Jesus and looking at God and looking at the right people. The, those days keep you humble. Those are going to be two very important days. And, and as we think about Rahab, you have to remember we stopped in Joshua chapter 2, verse number 2, and we talked about a little bit about her profession, how she was a harlot for work. That's what she did. But I lean towards, as we study this, but remember, we talked about two different aspects of what Rahab could have been. Number one, Rahab could have been someone who was sold into this harlotry so she can make money for the family, or scenario number two, she could have been somebody who just wanted to get into this so she could make money for herself. I lean towards the first one. And the reason why I lean towards the first one is because her family is actually mentioned in Joshua chapter two. So it's very possible and plausible that she was put into this because she needed to make money for the family. So now when you think about, when you think about Rahab, Rahab is looking for one thing. When you really think about it, Rahab is looking for the same thing every woman's looking for, is affection. Think about that for a second. Rahab is looking for affection. Now, affection is not just getting things. Because remember, in her realm of work, you can receive gifts for your services. You can receive places for your services. If you're with the right guy, you could receive status 
for your services. But just because you get those things doesn't mean you're getting affection. No. Rahab is looking for something different. She's looking for something different. Now, as we kind of go into this, because this is so pointed on a woman, this is not the application is just not for women. That that need, that want to feel needed, that's for men too. This is for everybody as we study this together. So you don't have to mute your ears if you're a guy. You don't have to heighten your ears if you're a woman. Listen to this. We all can learn from this together. Okay, so there's something here for all of us. Now, before we jump into this, here's here's a quick uh, excerpt here from a book. Um, I've got it on the video portion. You may have heard of it. It's called His Needs and Her Needs, right? It's it's a good book to just kind of prep and to study, and it, it's just good reading. And so it has a section on affection. And notice what it says. To most women, affection symbolizes security, protection, comfort, and approval, all of those things are vitally important commodities in their eyes. Now, think about Rahab. If she was put into harlotry or even if she chose this profession, what is she not getting? She's not getting what she needed to get early. She's not getting affection. So therefore, when she doesn't get affection, when she doesn't have that need like we talked about before, when she doesn't feel that value, what will what has to happen? Either you put yourself in something or you try to find something to replace or to find that feeling. And that's the hard part, guys, about, about those, two, those two days that are going to happen in your life. Because when you feel that need, when you, when you are needed by something or someone and then that need goes away, the temptation is going to be to replace it. The temptation also is going to be to hold on to it. The temptation is going to be to have a fear of missing out. So what Rahab is doing, Rahab is now in a position where she's looking for something. Please keep that in mind, right? This is so important as we study this. Please keep that in mind. Rahab is looking for something. And as you guys are listening to this, maybe you, maybe a friend, whatever the case might be, you might not know it, but you might be looking for something different and you're trying to find it in things. You're trying to find it in people. You're trying to find it in in other things that you can do and put in your body. There's certain things you're trying to find, but you can't find it. And I hope that as we look at Rahab, that we'll look at her heart. And what we're going to entitle part two is we're going to call this Rahab. I want to be needed. I want to be needed. Okay. So now, let, let's jump back into the text. Let's go back here to Jericho. Let's travel back and let's start in verse number three where we stop. So we stopped at where the two spies, they came into Rahab's home. And as they came into Rahab's home, now verse three, now the king of Jericho is here because he hears that two spies are in the city. Okay. So let's start here in verse three. So the king of Jericho sent to Rahab saying, bring out the men who've come to you, who've entered your house, for they have come to search out all the country. Then the woman took the two men and hid them. She said, yes, the men came to me, but I did not know where they were from. And it happened as the gate was being shut when it was dark that the men went out and where the men went, I don't know. So you should pursue them quickly that you might overtake them. Let's stop right there for a second. So uh, what's very important about this, and again, I want to present arguments so you can study for yourself, right? I want to present arguments so you can study for yourself. The the tough part about Rahab and the part that everybody mostly talks about with Rahab is the lie that she said here. Rahab's lie. Well, she's found in James. She's found in the book of Hebrews. She's she's in Hebrews 11. She's in the hall of faith. She was the she's in the line of Jesus, Matthew chapter one. Ah, but there's a blemish. It's her lie. She lied here. Now. Here's a couple arguments if you're taking notes. And again, you study this for yourself. I'm just going to present the arguments. It's very important that we see things from all sides and then we check everything with scripture. So here's the first, here's the first argument. Rahab's lie here, basically verse number four, the men were with me, but I don't know where they were from. And then they left already knowing that she already hid them. Rahab's, the first argument is Rahab's lie. Well, that's just never, that's just never right. So ethically, 
logically, spiritually, th this is just something that should just never be done. Even if the consequence is your death. And think about if Rahab would have been caught here, she's probably dead. And then not only is Rahab dead, but the spies are probably dead too. But you know, it really doesn't matter about that consequence. The lie is the most important thing. So therefore, Rahab just shouldn't have lied there in this in this instance. So that's the first argument. I understand that completely. But here's a couple things to think about. Rahab was not an Israelite at this time. Rahab was a Canaanite. So who's to say that there weren't other spies coming into Jericho? And who's also to say that those spies didn't stay at Rahab's place at the end? So lying, was that potentially normal for Rahab? Sure, because did she know God and did she know the law? Not like the Israelites did. So what she's doing right now could be very normal to her. Now, as we read this, right, and as a maybe a Jew would read this, yeah, that's completely wrong. But where Rahab is right now, this is normal to her, right? So as she's doing this, God could use this situation because he's God, right? So, so that's one way to look at this, right? That, that's one way to look at this argument. The second way to look at this argument is the lie was actually justified because she was protecting the spies. The lie was justified because she was protecting the spies. Now, think about the examples that we have in the Old Testament of examples just like this. So remember when Moses was born, how the Pharaoh said that, that he was going to kill all the children to and below? So then who stopped that from happening with Moses? Remember the book of, in, in the book of Genesis going into Exodus, Pua and Shipra, they stopped that. So then Moses was saved, but they lied. But Moses was saved, and therefore he was able to deliver God's people. So now how are we going to justify that? Or what about, what about Abram? Remember Abram lied and said, no, Sarai, this is not my wife. This is my sister. So how do we justify what Abram did? A, fore, a forefather that that Jewish culture probably would have really revered. Or what about this one? Think about this example. Think about Joseph. When Joseph put that cup into Benjamin's bag, was that deceptive? It wasn't truthful. <laughs> it wasn't truthful. So, but we never say, well, we never really focus on Joseph's lie. We never really focus on Abram's lie. We never really focus on Pua and Shipra's lie. But we, the only thing we look at, we focus on Rahab's lie. Isn't that interesting? Now, think about this also with Joseph. Not only was putting the cup in Benjamin's sack deceptive, but how come Joseph, when they came in asking for grain, how come Joseph didn't just say, I'm Joseph, your brother? So by Joseph prolonging his, his identity to his brothers, was that truthful? It's kind of deceptive. So now what are, what are, we, what are we talking about here? So if we're going to qualify that this is completely left field and wrong for Rahab, then we have to, by law of logic, we have to put all those other people in there with Rahab. Now, again, I'm not sitting here nailing things down. I'm sitting here presenting something, and you check it with Scripture, right? You check it. as I'm, I'm still checking, but I'm just presenting what's, what I'm seeing, right? That's it. That's it. So now I'm studying this. But here's, here's a fact that cannot be argued. Rahab lied, okay? Rahab lied. Now, because God in his infinite wisdom, God can use any person in any situation for his glory, Daniel chapter 2, then we just trust God. The details, yeah, it's fun to talk about those things and see what are the possibilities, but what's the, what's the crux of what's happening here? God can use anybody. God can use anybody. So now remember, going back to Exodus chapter 37, remember we talked about this in podcast number one. What's the theme of Rahab? What's the theme of this book of Joshua? The theme is not conquest, even though that's what we think. The theme of Joshua is mercy. The theme of Joshua is the younger sister, the harlot, is going to rescue her older sister, Israel, who also played the harlot. 
That's the theme. So what does God want me and you to see? Does God want us to argue back and forth about Rahab's lie? God wants us to see that somebody who's living a life like this can turn and glorify God and be a light to somebody, Israel, who is supposed to already be a light. That's what he wants us to see. So let's not miss God's point by going back and forth on, on minute details. Let's not miss God's theme. And that, guys, as we study and as we talk about Scripture, that's the danger of, I'm putting up air quotes if you're not watching the video, that's the danger of too much debate is we make the minutia stuff, the big stuff, and we miss out on what God wants us to see. We miss out on his character. Sometimes we miss out on it because, well, we can't really explain that, or we don't really know that for sure. And that might be true, but what can we know for sure? We can know that God acted. And so what are we going to do? Argue with God? Hey, God, I think you should have used, I think Rahab should have done things differently. I think you should have made this happen. I think you should have made that happen. Well, what are we, who are we, God? So instead of arguing back and forth about the minutia of things, why don't we just trust, even though you may not agree with what happened here, God's ways are always higher than ours. So I'm just going to trust that God had a purpose for this, and I'm just going to trust God. Now, everything else we can study and have fun and, and we can look at things, but ultimately we all need to come to the conclusion, this is what God chose, and God decided to use her specifically. God used her. And here's, here's, here's the danger of, of thinking that way too, is when this happens to people that we know in real life, then sometimes we fight over the minutia of things. Why would God use a person like that? Do you know the lifestyle that, that he or she lived? Do you know the things that they did? Now they're back into the church and now they want to do all this stuff. Why, why do you use her, God? Why do you use him, God? You should use, you should use people who's been here and been faithful. Sounds like the older brother in Luke 15, doesn't it? A little resentful. So guess what resentment is? Resentment is a lack of mercy. We're missing the theme. So sometimes if we think the wrong way about Scripture, we will automatically think the wrong way about our brethren. We'll think the wrong way about, well, God, I think you should do this, and you should have done this, and I feel like things could have been better if you would have used these people. You see what we're doing? We're missing the theme. We're missing God's theme. So as we look at this, we just understand God is using this woman. And what we're about to see, I'm letting y'all know. If you're taking notes, you're going to have to write this down because you're going to want to see this and study this for yourself. This absolutely blew my mind. Okay, this, this it was crazy. But we'll get there. We'll get there in a second. But now as we understand what's, what's going on, verse 7. So obviously she tells that lie. So we've covered that lie. So she tells that lie, and then the and then two men go out to pursue the spies that apparently left, quote unquote. And then the city gates are shut, verse seven. Now verse eight, we pick up. Now before they lay down, now these are the two spies that Rahab hid. Before they lay down, she came up to them on the roof. Now, here's here's what I'm talking about, what is about to go crazy. Highlight, highlight, circle, right, all over verses 9, 10, 11, and 12. We're going to break down all of that. But highlight it, circle it, underline all of it. Verse 9, she said to the men, I know that the Lord's given you this land and that the terror of you has fallen on us and that all the inhabitants of the land are faint-hearted because of you. For we have heard how the Lord has dried up the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt and what you did to the two kings of the Amorites who were on the other side of the Jordan, the Sihon and the Og, which you utterly destroyed. And as soon as we heard these things, our hearts melted, neither did there remain any more courage in anyone because of you. For the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and on earth. Okay, <laughs> let's stop there. Let's stop there. Now. Let's preface this. Keep this in mind. Now, remember, what does Rahab want? What is the theme of this book? The theme is mercy. The theme is also the younger sister is going to help the older sister. Now, keep this in mind. When Rahab says that she hears about what God has done, 
This is not just recent stuff with Joshua that she's hearing. She's heard stuff going all the way back to when they left Egypt with Moses. Okay, keep all that in mind. She's going all the way back there. This is the stuff that we've been hearing. Okay, so that's going to be super, super important. But here's what's interesting. This is why as we as we journey with people, as we help people, as we try to be lights in this world, this is why mercy and having the right eyes are super important. Now, this is coming from a person who haven't who hasn't always tried to be aware of this, but I'm I'm trying to do better in this aspect. Sometimes we think that we can't learn anything from anyone else. So therefore, we brought this up last time. What if Naomi would have had that attitude? I know the true living God. You're a Moabitess. I can't really learn the mercy, compassion, and love of God from you. But what did Ruth throughout the entire book, what did she show? She showed the heart of God. Guess who can learn from that? A child of God. Same thing's going to happen here. Rahab, a Canaanite woman who was either sold into harlotry or she chose to do this. But what is Rahab showing to the spies? The mercy of God. You can see the mercy of God in others. Now, does that mean that, well, I just don't teach? No. But it also means you can look and see someone has the mercy of God, but they still need to know God. Two things can be true. But sometimes we think, well, because you're not this, then you can't have any quality of God. Guys, we're going to miss out on so many doors. We're going to miss out on so many opportunities. We're going to miss out on so many aspects of life and helping people because we look at somebody and we say, well, you're not us. So therefore, because you're not us, you can't teach me anything. Guys, that is pride. That is straight up pride. And we're going to miss out on things. Two things can be true. Someone can show mercy and someone can still not know God but need to know him. So now in humility, guess what that opens up a door? I really appreciate what you did. You showed me mercy. You showed me humility. You showed me kindness. You showed me hospitality. Do you know who God is? Well, I don't know who God is. You're already halfway there because you're showing things that he has. Let me introduce you to God. Why can't we do that? Why can't we do that? Because in our pride, we don't believe others have that. And that's where Israel fell. No one else can have this. But guess who had it, guys? Rahab. Guess who had it? Ruth. When Jesus got here, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, guess who had it? The Gentiles and those who weren't of Israel, Romans chapter 9. Is that the case today still? Is that the case today? And are we so prideful to say that people don't have aspects in the heart of God? They do. But in our humility, guess what God wants us to do? Man, you're doing really great things. Let me introduce you to God. Why can't we do that? Why is that so hard? Just think about that. Just meditate on that. Now, uh, da, da, da. so verse nine, let's break this down. So we're. He, I wish I could show you this chart, but I, if you want it, I'll give it to you, right? So, so send me a message and then I'll give you this chart. But if you want to write this down, here's what you should write. So basically write uh, Rahab first and then like a dash and then this is what she's going to say and then we'll write what God said, okay? So start off with Rahab, verse, verse, uh, verse nine. Rahab says, I know God has given you this land. This is a Canaanite woman saying this. This is a woman who doesn't know God, doesn't know Yahweh. She doesn't know him like the Israelites do. But what does she say? I know that God has done this. Isn't it interesting? Now go back to Joshua chapter 1 verse 2. Watch what God says. Arise and cross this Jordan. You and all the people to a land, what notice what God said, to a land that I am giving. 
What did Rahab say? I know God has given. So guess what the younger sister's doing? The younger sister is infusing faith into the older one. Now, look, watch this. Chapter, uh, chapter 2, verse 9. Now notice what else she says. Rahab, the terror of you has fallen on us. Now notice what God said going back, like we said, all the way back to Exodus. Look at Exodus chapter 23, verse 27. I will send my terror ahead of you. This is insane. Rahab is saying the exact same things that God has been saying since Egypt. So you're saying that there's nothing that the Israelites can learn from this woman? She's literally saying the same things God is saying. Rahab, Joshua chapter 2, verse 9 again. And all the inhabitants of the land are faint-hearted because of you, right? They're all faint-hearted because of you. And she's also said that our hearts have either melted or they've been faint-hearted because of you, verse 11. Remember what God said in Exodus chapter 15, verse 15? All the inhabitants of Canaan have melted away. Same thing. How is Rahab, how is Rahab knowing all this without knowing God? What is Rahab? Now again, let's let's focus back in on Rahab for a second. What does Rahab want? She wants affection. Guess what? Guess who Rahab is hearing about? She's not hearing about Baal. She's not hearing about Baal. She's not hearing about Astaroth. She's not hearing about in order for me to please these gods, I have to sell my body in order that we could get rain and the gods can be pleased. That's that's not what I'm hearing. I'm not getting affection from Baal and Astaroth as little G God. I'm not getting affection from them, but I'm hearing about a God. I'm hearing about a person that actually cares. I'm hearing about another God that takes care of his people. I'm hearing about another God that's the one true God. I want to be a part of him. We have no idea, guys. There are so many Rahabs out here in terms of that mindset. This is what I've seen. This is what I've been told. But the way that you live your life, the things that I'm seeing personally in my life, I know there's something better. I know there's something better for me out there. And then guess what that is? That's a door for us. That's a door to open. Let's show who God is. But isn't it interesting? The spies aren't saying this stuff. Who's saying this stuff that God is saying? (laughs) Rahab. How cool is that? Then here's another one. Here's another one. Joshua chapter 2 verse 10. She goes on to say, Now, again, remember, now here's proof that she's heard about all this stuff going back to the Red Sea. Verse 10, we have heard how the Lord has dried up the water of the Red Sea when you came out of Egypt and what you did to the two kings and the Amorites who were on the other side of the Jordan of the Sihon and Og, whom you utterly destroyed. Remember in Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 4? Look at what this says. And Sihon and Og, the Lord will do to them, the Canaanites, just as what he did to Sihon and Og and the king and the Amorites and their land, which he destroyed. Then in Exodus chapter 14, verses 29 and 31, the sons of Israel walked on dry land on the midst of the sea and the waters were like a wall. And when Israel saw the great power that the Lord had used against the Egyptians, the people feared the Lord and they believed in the Lord. Isn't that literally the same thing Rahab just said? but she wasn't there. But what's the difference? Rahab, someone who didn't know God had faith. And that faith, guess what that faith was? That faith was developed. So guess what this proves? When someone hears about God, when someone hears about the goodness of God, even when someone hears about the justice of God, of what God is doing, Guess what that develops and plants in people's hearts? It plants the seed of faith. 
when the seed of faith is planted in people who do not know God, that's when people who do know God, they can cultivate and help with that seed as God cultivates it. We can help. And we'll see that later on down the line as we look at this. Another one, Joshua chapter 2, verse 11. As soon as we heard these things, our hearts melted, and there was no more courage in us. For the Lord your God, he is God in heaven, above, and earth beneath. How many times has she said Yahweh? She said Yahweh multiple times. She's based off of context, right? Now, again, I understand because the spies wanted to conceal their identity, but just based off of what the text says, she has said Yahweh more than the spies had said Yahweh. And sometimes it's a sad statement that those who have the seed of faith give more credit to God than those who should have faith. Why are we afraid to say God did this? This was the Lord giving God credit. Guess what Rahab, all she did, Yahweh, 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 God, 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 God. She's not afraid to give God credit, and she's not afraid to give God glory. Why are we? Well, it sounds kind of weird. It's, we, we don't want to sound this. That sounds, that sounds awkward. That's, it doesn't matter. I've heard somebody say this. Just because somebody misuses something doesn't mean that you shouldn't use it. Just because somebody misuses something doesn't mean that you should use it. Well, we don't want to sound, God did this. How? I don't know. Can you explain it? I don't know. But what I want to do as a child of God who has faith, I want to give my God credit. I never want any credit to come. Well, it was my knowledge. It was my, it was my pulling myself from my bootstraps. It was because of my networking. It was because of who I knew. It was God. All glory to God. We need to start saying that stuff more because that will what that will do is that will keep our hearts away from when great things happen. It will keep our hearts away from us being uplifted by something that God had already planned. And Rahab is not afraid to say, hey, God did this. God did this. Now, remember, so uh, verse 11, so we heard it and our hearts melted. Then Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 28 our brethren have made our hearts melt, saying the people are bigger and taller than we, the cities are large and they're fortified to heaven. Then Joshua chapter 2 verse 11, notice what Rahab said, Yahweh is God in heaven above and earth beneath. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 39, the Lord, he is God in heaven above and on earth below. Rahab is saying stuff that God has been saying and Rahab hasn't been there to hear it. But all she has heard is that God is different and he's affectionate and he's merciful and I want that life. That is insanely beautiful. That's insanely beautiful. So guess what Rahab is feeling? Not only am I going to help protect two people that are from God, but I want to know God. I want to feel needed. I want to feel, what did the book say? I wanted to feel needed. I want to feel protection. I want to feel comfort. I want to feel those things, and I'm not getting that living the life that I'm living. Maybe that's you. And maybe the seeds of faith have developed in your heart, but you just have nowhere to go. You, you, don't know, you don't know what questions to ask. You don't even know where to turn, but you know that something is different and things should be better than what they already are. This is why we exist here on the podcast. This is why we exist. Like I always say, you will never be the first to reach out. You will, you will be invited in to a, to a group. You will be invited into a family that just wants to know God more. And we can't wait for you to be a part of what we got going on. So add us. Again, just, just to give you that comfortability, but you guys are already so comfortable, but I never want to stop saying this. Reach out on Instagram. Reach out on Facebook. Reach out on these social media platforms and come join this of what we got going on because you might be just like Rahab. But the stuff that she's saying 
is the exact same thing that God has been telling Israel this whole time. But here's the difference. God has been saying everything Rahab just said, but guess what? Sometimes what do the children of Israel do? I don't believe that. What do they do with Moses in the wilderness? Let's complain and murmur. So the, the younger sister is able to teach a lesson to the older. And we're going to see that. We're going to see that moving forward. Now, as we, as we kind of close these thoughts, because then we'll kind of give a finale next week. But uh, verse, verse 12. Now I beg you, swear to me by the Lord, since I have shown you kindness, that you will also show kindness. Notice, who does she mention first? To my father's house. What did Jesus, what was his teaching eventually going to be about humility? The first shall be last, and the last shall be first. And then also his teaching, Jesus later on when he was coming on the scene, what else was his teaching? In order to be great, let each one become their servant. So Rahab, let's assume, either, either scenario, scenario number one, Let's assume Rahab was put into this because of her family. Guess who she's asking God to have mercy on? The people that put her in this life. <laughs> That's ridiculous. She's asking mercy for the people that put her in this life. Then let's assume scenario number two, she put herself into this life because maybe of what she wasn't getting at home. But what does she still say? She didn't talk about herself. She said, spare my father's home. That's, that's, that, that, that's ridiculous. Guess what that is? Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive what? <laughs> they shall receive mercy. What is the theme of the book? Mercy. And who is showing this? Somebody who is not of Israel, quote unquote. Very interesting, isn't it? Take care of my father's home. Then notice what else she says. And give me a true token that you're going to do this. Verse 13, verse 13. Now notice how she goes in depth. This is ridiculous. Spare my father. Spare my mother. Spare my brothers. Spare my sisters. And then notice she goes a little farther. And spare all that they have. Now, again, I lean towards scenario number one that she was put into this because possibly uh, the family needed the money. Possibly the, the family was put in debt. So she had to live a life that she didn't choose. She was dealt a deck of cards that she couldn't she didn't pick. But because of the mercy that she's heard God had. She says, I want you to have mercy potentially on my mother on my father, on my brothers, and on my sisters who were okay to put me in this life. As you grow older, when you're younger, when things go down and when things happen, you tend to blame everybody else around you. And I'm not saying when you blame everyone, or else, everyone else around you that other people didn't have a role to play. I'm not saying that's, that's not true. It's real. But as you get older and as you study the heart of God, you begin to understand God's mercy and compassion a little bit more, and you begin to be more empathetic. And so now Rahab could have made this whole thing a, a, a self-inflicted pity party. I'm in this situation because of my father. I'm in this situation because of my mother. My brothers and sisters didn't care about me. They put me here. But she just says, Lord, please help and please spare them. When you study the heart of God, you want mercy on those? This is crazy. When you study the heart of God, you get to the point where you want mercy on those who didn't and maybe who still don't give you mercy. But if that's the case, that's how you know you're living Matthew chapter 5. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain it. You can walk around with a, with a life of resentment towards people, 
because of what they did or, or what they didn't do. You can live a life of bitterness. You can live a life of of almost disdain towards these people. But as you get closer to the heart of God, Lord, it's not about me. Lord, I want you to help. I want you to protect. I want you to love. I want you to cover. And I want you to take care of everyone, even if they hurt me. Why? Am I doing this to show that I'm bigger? Is, am I doing this to show them that, that I'm stronger than they are? No. When you get to this point in life, you're not doing it to prove anything to anybody. You're getting to this point in life because you're trying to show that God has changed me and I understand his heart more. So if this happened, I, please give them mercy. Rahab understands that. And in order for Rahab to get the mercy that she has always wanted, Rahab finally gets it. In order to get the mercy, the affection, the comfort, the care that I've always wanted, in order to do that, according to Yahweh, according to God, I have to be that. Sometimes we want what God has without being what God is. We have to be what and who God is. And Rahab, a younger harlot, a younger sister, a Canaanite Baal Ashtaroth worshiper, gets this. And sometimes the children of Israel and sometimes us today who claim to know God, we still don't get it. You see why we can learn? You see why if we're humble that we can see things we need to see? But we have to be humble to see what God wants us to see. And these two spies, they're seeing some stuff. <laughs> I, I like to say that. They're seeing some stuff. They're seeing some stuff, right? So then quickly, then we'll end here. 14. So the men said to her, our lives are yours. And, and none of you tell this business, if none of you tell this business of ours, and it shall be when the Lord has given us the land. This is sick. This is crazy. So when they came into when they came into Jericho, what did they come out? What did they come in as? They come they came in as spies. Can we do this? Can we take this land? Can we can we really tear down these walls? But because they listened, and this is credit to the spies, because they listened, now what are the spies saying? Well, thank you. Our lives are yours, but the spies are saying when the Lord does this. So now guess what Rahab just infused to those two guys? Lord's going to do it. He's going to do it. And then not only will he do it, but when he does what he's going to do, we will deal very kindly with you. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. <laughs> That's crazy. This is crazy. You see how this is beautiful? And you see how all of this, the Old Testament, all of it flows to Matthew chapter 5, and then the New Testament flows back to it. And Jesus is saying, this is what I've wanted everybody to see. Every Old Testament example, every New Testament example, all of it flows back to what I said to be. And sometimes we can miss that. But we see that through the life of Rahab. This is crazy. Great study, right? I, I can't wait to get into next week. And we're really going to really hone in on the spies a little bit more next week, but we'll get into Rahab and we'll see kind of what she does, but then we'll also see how the spies, how their mind changed towards stuff. So love you guys, man. Appreciate you guys. Thank you guys for being here again. Reach out. We want you to be a part of what we got going on here. You guys do such a great job already of reaching out, share the podcast. I mean, we want you just to be a part of what we got going on. So we love you guys. We appreciate you guys and Lord willing, I don't have any meetings Monday, so Lord willing, we'll be back on Monday with another podcast. Thanks, guys.